Hello, Pastor Jim Doherty. Let's pray together as we go to God's Word. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have together to study the Word of God, to grow deeper in our Christian faith, and be built and established and rooted in Jesus. Please teach us now in the Word of God as we want to grow deeper with Jesus and allow us to be led of the Holy Spirit. And please, Holy Spirit, guide us to truth and guide us to Jesus. We lift up this time to you, be glorified in it and through it, as I'm careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory now, as I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I am blessed to be with you today as I want to answer the question, what does it mean to be saved? If you have your Bible, I would invite you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Paul the Apostle wrote to the Ephesian church there, and in verse 8, he says, For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Let me just first of all say that we have been saved by the grace of God. As Paul says there, for by grace have you been saved. But it's through faith in Jesus Christ. A person must believe and put their faith and trust and hope in Jesus Christ, that he came 2,000 years ago, that he died on the cross, that he was buried, defeating death, he arose again from the dead. We must believe and put our faith in Jesus Christ to be saved. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So Paul says here, for by grace have you been saved through faith. It is the grace of God. Grace is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but God in his grace and his mercy, he saves us through his son, Jesus Christ. As we put our faith in Jesus Christ, I heard faith, it's, if you were to define it another way, it's forsaking all, I trust him. But when we put our faith in Jesus, we believe in him, we put our trust in him, and we believe by faith. So by grace have you been saved through faith. And Paul says then that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Let me just say that salvation, we cannot be saved by our good works. It is not about us. It is about the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He even said seven statements, one of which he said, on the cross, it is finished. When Jesus paid it all, he paid all of our sin on the cross and he finished the work that he came to do. And so by his grace, we have been saved through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not of ourselves that we are saved. It's not of our good works, our religion, our good deeds. It's about the finished work of Jesus, believing in him, trusting in him and putting our faith in him and believing in the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, believing that he is crucified, buried, and rose again from the dead. He's a perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he can forgive us no matter what we've done. We, we need to repent of our sins, turn from our sins, and believe in Jesus, and believe in the gospel, and trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior by faith. Paul says again, not of works, lest any one should boast. I can't boast on judgment day of my salvation because of any work that I've done. I will boast in the cross of Jesus Christ. I will boast in him because Jesus saves. He's the one that forgives. He's the one that makes us free and sets us free. He's the one that gives you eternal life. John 17, 3, this is eternal life to know you, the true and living God, Jesus Christ. That's how we're saved. And what are we saved from? The penalty of our sins, being separated from God in hell. We're saved from spending eternity apart from God because of believing in Jesus and accepting his gift of eternal life. Notice in verse 8 there it says, And not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift. 
If I was to give you a gift and then I was to ask you to write me a check for it or give me some money for it, you would look at me funny. But God has given us his gift of salvation, and it's not paid by us. It's paid in full by Jesus. It is a gift to us, and when you receive a gift, you should receive it and be blessed because it's been given by the giver. And the greatest gift giver of all is God through his son, Jesus Christ. Let me just also say in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus said, you must be born again or you will not see the kingdom of God. When you receive Christ and you are saved, the Holy Spirit of God takes residence in your heart. And Jesus even said, you must be born of the flesh, born of water, and born of the Spirit. Truly, truly, I say to you, you must be born again. So we must be born physically, but to be saved, we must be born spiritually. And how does that happen? When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of God comes into your heart, my heart, and my life, making me born again, born from above, saved. We've been bought by the blood of Jesus. We've been saved and purchased and redeemed, bought out of slavery because of Jesus and his blood has cleansed us of our sins and therefore, by faith in Jesus Christ, by his grace, we are saved. Consider salvation. It is so important to understand what it means to be saved. So if somebody was to ask you, what does it mean to be saved? You can let them know, I have put my faith in Jesus Christ. God has saved me by his grace. It's not because of my works. It's because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross, that he saves me, that he forgives me and makes me right with God as I repent of my sins and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. But John 3, 3, John chapter 3, as Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again or you will not see the kingdom of God. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes residence in your heart, making you saved, making you born again, born from above. Let me end this time here sharing a concept here. If a person in this life is born once, physically speaking, they will die twice. Meaning, you will die a physical death. Hebrews 9.27 says it is appointed for man to die once, and after this comes a judgment. But the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, the second death. The second death is for non-believers, those names that are not found in the book of life, who are not saved, who has not re re received Christ or believed. The Bible says those names will be cast in the lake of fire, which is a second death. So if you're born once, physically, you never accept Jesus Christ or his salvation or his gift, a person will die twice, physically and spiritually separated from God in hell. But here's the other side of the story. If you receive Christ by faith, his grace has saved you by faith in Jesus Christ, then you believe in the gospel that he was crucified, buried, and rose again from the dead. You put your faith in Jesus, the Son of God. You ask God to forgive you of your sins through his son, Jesus. John 3, 3 talks about being born again. The Holy Spirit takes residence in your heart. So you're born twice. You're born physically. We all have a physical birth as we came into this world. But as you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit takes residence in your heart. You have a spiritual birthday. And on that moment, you receive the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus comes into your heart. God the Father comes in. It's a package deal. But you're born twice because the Holy Spirit now takes residence in your heart. And you would only die once, physically speaking, unless the rapture of the church happened. And we'll talk about that in another time. But the rapture is when Jesus is going to come and rapture his church home. We'll talk about that as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But when you, when, what it means to be saved is that you've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. You've put your faith in Jesus Christ. You've asked God to forgive you of your sins. It's not about your works. It's the finished work of Jesus. And you're born twice. You're born again. Not only physical birth, but you're physically, you receive Christ spiritually 
as the Holy Spirit has come in to your heart and Jesus has taken residence in your heart and now you are a child of God. John 1.12 says, To as many as receive Christ, to them he gave power to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Praise God for his salvation through his son Jesus. It's not about our works. It's the finished work of Jesus on the cross. But Jesus saves. Praise God for his salvation. Would you pray with me? Father, bless the believer in Christ that is watching this. Help them to understand the importance of our salvation in Jesus as you save. And the Holy Spirit taking residence in our heart at that time when we receive the gospel, when we believe in Jesus, that you were crucified for us, buried and defeating death, you arose again from the dead. You took our judgment on the cross. You took our sin. And because of that, by believing in Jesus, we will have everlasting life. But Lord, help us now to live as followers and disciples of Jesus as we believed in Jesus and received salvation. Thank you for the gift of salvation and thank you for the hope that we have in Christ and the hope of eternal life in heaven. We bless your name and help us to share this with others so that they too can experience the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ by putting their faith in Jesus. We don't have to go to hell. God saves people that believe in his son Jesus and we can go to heaven. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me in John 14, 6. Glorify your name in our lives and help us, Lord, to grow deeper in the word of God and in the Christian faith. We commit the rest of our day to your hands and the rest of our lives in your hands. Use us to be people that serve you and that are obedient to your word and your commands. Thank you for your salvation. We don't take it lightly, Lord, because you didn't take it lightly on that cross. You died for us and you gave your life for us, but you also victoriously defeated death and arose again. And we too can live a new life in Christ. Thank you, Father, because of the Holy Spirit within us that leads us to truth, guides us to Christ, and allows us to be saved because of the finished work of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like to watch more videos just like this, you can go to power2change.org and click discipleship and learn to follow Jesus. Thank you for watching this video. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.